Have you ever noticed how all the biggest YouTubers in the world agree on one thing when it comes to growing a YouTube channel? Improve something every time. Do it better next time. You gotta work and level up. Each video has to be better and better. But what if they're wrong? I wanted to know, so I set out to blow up a YouTube video the laziest way I could. I've given myself 500% less time than normal to make a video. And no matter what stage the video is at, when the timer ends, I have to post it to the channel. But what am I actually trying to achieve here? Well, my goal is to try and blow up a video with the least effort possible. But blow up means different things to different people. If you're a new channel and you get 10,000 views, you might say that you blew up. And I think you should, because that's a massive achievement. And if you're Mr. Beast, you might say, well, I blew up because I got 200 million views. So in this case, I'm going to say that my video needs to blow up and get 300,000 views in its first two weeks of life. Now, you might be looking at my channel and going, well, you have a quarter of a million subscribers, that should be easy. But actually, getting 300,000 views on a video ever in my niche is very tough. So it is a challenge. More importantly though, how much time is 500% less than normal? Well, my regular videos can actually take me weeks, sometimes even months. But in this case, I'm only going to give myself two days. Wait, wait, don't go. I know that might sound like a lot to you, but trust me, it doesn't matter if your videos take two hours, what you're about to find out is relevant to everyone. All right, back to the video now, but don't let me catch you running away again. Otherwise, I'll release the hound. Get him, Benny. <laughs> if you want to blow up a video, the first thing you need to do is to go and find an idea that can actually get some traction. And to find that idea, you need inspiration. And there's a few different ways of doing this. So the first way, you simply look at what works for other YouTubers and then make your own versions of that. The second thing you can do is just to remake your most viewed video, but in a slightly different way. So have a look at Noah Kagan's channel. He does that all the time and it works so well. The third is known as social hacking. And this is where you go and make a video about someone who's far more clickable than you, an influencer or a celebrity, and then tell their story. Now those videos can do unbelievably well, but you have to do tons of research. And that is just not the lazy way. Now the next option you have is to target a trend. Now trends come in all different shapes and sizes. They could be a breaking news story, Story. They could be about an event of some sort, a product launch. And I'd say they're probably one of the easiest ways you can ever get views on YouTube. Luckily for me, there was a trend brewing. And actually, I knew quite a bit about it already, which meant no more research. Double lazy. Okay, so I've got my idea. Now I need to work out how to present the idea and make a thumbnail and title for it. And instead of working too hard, I just took the Noah Kagan approach and borrowed a thumbnail that had worked once before on my channel and then just made a different version of it. Now that might sound boring to you, but this gets Noah millions of views. And this is crazy. By doing things the lazy way, I've actually done things faster than normal. So now I'm going to plan my video ahead of schedule. With my basic plan on paper, I then moved on to think about how I could make it more visually interesting. So this is where I'm a bit stuck. Usually what I would do is go and film loads of B-roll. This is footage that goes over the top of my footage just because it makes the video such a better experience for the viewer. And it usually helps retention a lot too. The problem is B-roll takes a long time and it's not the lazy way. And because I've only given myself about 90 minutes to film this whole thing, it's also not an option. But I think I've just come up with one of the best ideas I've ever had because it's going to make producing videos faster, but not only that, enable anyone to make more visually interesting content, so long as it works. If it doesn't work, then this whole video is probably going to be ruined. Believe in yourself. Don't stop. No, don't do that. Anyway, let me show you this genius hack. Enter the film booth shuffle. And the first thing you need to do is just go outside. Now, ideally, what you need to find is an area where you have a different view behind you, a different view in front of you, a different view that way, and a different view that way. And then all you do is you present a few lines like this, and you just spin the camera around like so and then you present your next few lines and you spin your camera around like so and then you present your next few lines like this and then you spin the camera around again and then you present a few more lines like this and what you have now is four different setups with almost zero effort should have been lazy years ago now there is one problem with the film booth shuffle which i'll show you how to fix in the edit later but i guess the real question is will randomly changing the backdrops have the same effect as b-roll i don't know <laughs> my plan was now complete so i moved on to writing the scripts and because i wouldn't have tons of time to come up with fancy editing tricks, I had to find a faster retention solution. So to do that, I turned to metaphor. Metaphors are amazing for a few different reasons, especially because they simplify things and they can make regular information kind of more visual. So just let me give you an example. So let's say you want to make a video about retiring in your 30s. You could say something like this. Retiring at 30 is like building a strong foundation for a house. It takes careful planning, hard work, and smart investments to lay the groundwork for a secure future. But once it's done, you can live comfortably for the rest of your life knowing it all won't come tumbling down. Now, there's a strong chance that when you heard that, you pictured a house being built in your mind. I pictured a little man with a shovel digging a hole. 
Not that that's how houses are built. But metaphors help information become more engaging, and that's a really good thing. Because of the time restrictions, I couldn't film behind the scenes footage, so I'll fill you in on what happened next as we watch some of the outtakes from the finished video. The shuffle was magnificent, and it allowed me to move with the speed and agility of an Olympic gold medalist Sparrowhawk. And it didn't just make me feel confident about the challenge, it made me feel unstoppable. This video sucks. Now the first half is working fine, but the flipping metaphor I wrote was about Salvador Dali and the surrealist art movement, which is, uh, how do I say this? Metaphors really just they need to simplify things, not make them more confusing or more boring. And as much as the viewers of this channel are smart, intelligent, good looking people who hit subscribe, a metaphor about Dali, unless you know the whole history behind him, it's not gonna make much sense. So what I'm gonna have to do is, I'm gonna have to rewrite the whole second half of the script and then I'm gonna have to go outside and film it in the snow again. And then I'm gonna have to edit the whole thing. And I've only got three quarters of the day left to do it, which isn't very lazy, but I do think I can get pretty far in the time that I've got left. Hi, me again. Sadly, I had to abandon filming behind the scenes B-roll again because of the time problem. I thought I'd take the time to show you now how to edit the shuffle. Let's edit this bad boy. So the first step of editing the shuffle is just to throw your footage into the timeline and cut off the beginning and end of each clip so there's no dead air. Now, this is the really important part I mentioned earlier that could wreck this whole effect. Pay attention! When you shuffle between different locations, you have to make sure that your eyes are always in the same place from scene to scene. Because if they're not, then the background change feels really jarring like this. Now, the magic of this effect is when it works, it looks like you're not really moving but your background is. And that's really satisfying but also kind of interesting visually. Even though it doesn't really make any sense as to why you move scene all the time. Let's not worry about that for now. But the best thing about the shuffle is this. This is what one of my regular video edits looks like. That's this video's timeline. Ridiculously overwhelming, right? This is the edit on the film booth shuffle, which is like 60% of the whole video I was working on. Look how little editing I had to do. This entire section took me about 20 minutes to cut together. So not only was filming this faster than in the studio, but it also was a game changer for the edit too, by hours. All right, so back to the vlog now because the timer had just run out, the challenge was over, and I actually had the time to to document what I was doing. Sorry, I didn't get to show you any of that stuff. The time has run out. I'm just going to leave the video as it is now and post it tomorrow. And there's a few things concerning me. One thing in particular, I just know is going to rub people up the wrong way. <laughs> so let me just break down my concerns. The first one is I've left some sound effects in slightly out of time. The second one is I left random comment about Salvador Dali in from my original script because I forgot to refilm that line and then just ran out of time. But I need some more facts about Salvador Dali. And then the third, I called the software I was talking about in the video the wrong name quite a lot of times. So instead of calling it chat GPT, I called it one letter difference, chat GTP. Or this, chat GTP, chat GTP, chat GTP. So yeah, <sighs> we'll see how that goes. So are those big YouTubers all wrong about trying to make your next video better than your last? And did my video hit 300,000 views in two weeks? And more importantly, did any of my sexy viewers notice that I'd put 500% less effort into the video? Well, yes. I mean, they were angry that I called the software the wrong name the whole way through. <laughs> but other than that, nothing negative came in. In fact, you guys were super supportive. So the lazy video in that respect was a massive success. So is that proof that all the big YouTubers are wrong? Well, no. Really what it taught me was two things. The first is to find ways to make your video quality high, but enable you to work smarter, not harder. And the second one, which has been a massive revelation for me, is that YouTube's like open heart surgery. When a surgeon cuts open someone, they have one clear goal in their mind. Fix the problem with the heart. They never remove a patient's mole at the same time just because they were down there. We as creators get so distracted by the smaller things, we often overlook fixing the bigger problem at hand. But by being lazy and setting a time limit, it actually helped me to work out what really matters and what didn't. So that slightly out of time sound effect I could have spent 10 minutes fraternizing over got left because it was just a harmless mole. Which brings us on to if the video hit 300,000 views in its first two weeks of life. No, it failed. Well, it did eventually. It just took a few weeks longer. But speed really isn't everything. But actually, if I look at the amount of time I spent on the video, that's my record amount of views per minute spent on a video. So it still feels like a victory. The thing is, what if you don't have a trend to jump on and there's nobody in your niche to take inspiration from? How do you blow up a video then? Well, watch this video next to learn how we blew up a channel with only five videos doing the exact opposite of everyone else, which generated millions of views. Ow, I just sound something spiky.